The first edition of this event took place in 1995. Back then it was still called 10 Days of Techno. They changed the name to 10 Days Off because the festival had so much more to offer than just techno. There was minimal, house, drum and bass, new rave, you name it. So 10 Days Off was born. The lineup offers a perfect mix of established, well-known names and young talent. And of course DJs and producers from all over the world. And one of them is this guy. James Holden, it's delightful to see you. I fell in love with Ricardo Barfu. <laughs> I think he's delightful. I really do. He's really cute, isn't he? Is he is extremely yeah. cute. And have you heard his records? Not yet, because he's not really that well known yet yeah, in Belgium. Yeah, he's growing this. Ricardo Tovar. Is that the way to pronounce your name? Yeah. Or am I exaggerating a little bit? No, Ricardo Tovar. Yeah. He was telling us about uh, the day that you phoned him basically to tell him that you liked his demo and that he, he almost fainted. Really? Yeah, you make people faint. You're a bad person. He never told me that. He always played it cool with me. Like, uh -huh, uh -huh. But it was nice. Oh my god, <laughs> I, I've spilled the beans? <laughs> He's going to be my bitch do you when think, we to the hotel. Shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you think the chemistry between you is now going to change? No, I don't think. It's already past that stage. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because it's my girlfriend. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? <laughs> Not really, no. No, that's the kind of stuff yeah. we like to hear. Really? Yeah, the whole, please. Well, it's just boys on tour together. What else are you going to talk about apart from joking? Women and booze and yeah, liquor. We both have girlfriends who we're really committed to, <laughs> so we just joke that we're going to have sex with each other instead. You have this amazing label. You're an amazing guy. You don't need to have sex with boys. He's a young Come boy on. from Chile. What more could you want? <laughs> You're his boss, for God's sake. <laughs> Do you think that the, the purpose of labels has changed recently over the it past is, couple of years? It is changing and with MP3s and you can go on Beatport and find a million tracks you've never heard of and only three of them are good. So this, the validation, the like, taste that a label provides is maybe more important. For us it's still a strange time because what we did like three, four years ago, it was sort of not even what we did, like a part of what we did. And some people copied it and like it was a hit, some things we did were hits and some people copied it, sucked all the soul and life out of it and made a whole scene of things that sound a bit like DC records from 2005 or something. And it's that really... It forces you to like move and change and reevaluate everything. But I think the way it's gone, the new artists like Ricardo, whose stuff is so like full of fire and out of controlness, and then Luke Sex. Abbott, yeah, really, Sex. yeah, really. It's not the success. It's. Having this family of cool people, or like the artists on the label and my girlfriend who runs the label with me, and having that, those people around you, and we all kind of agree about music, and that just gives you the strength not to give in to everyone else. And generally, the dance music scene is really conservative, really, really conservative. And if you read what people think on the internet, then that's going to make you into someone who's scared to really make an exciting record. Go to a, a techno club now, and from the first four minutes, well, not four minutes, first minute of a record, you can predict what the rest is like. The breakdown and there's the white noise, and you know exactly what's coming. It's, scenes are exciting, then everyone realizes it's trendy, then everyone copies it, and it's boring. Yeah, I'd like to think that maybe in the future, people could have higher standards and not accept the copiers and not say dance music is all about influences and sampling. It's not. I quite like to have fights. I'm, like, I'm happiest when I'm fighting. When BC had it really easy, I was 
maybe less happy than at the start when we really had a fight on our hands and at the end, well not the end but now, when we feel like we really have a fight on our hands and talking to the guys from Compact, they feel like they have a fight on their hands too and that's exciting, like time when you've got something to go against, that's when you really know who you are.